With the benefit of hindsight and published scientific results, explanations for discoveries made with the Perseverance rover early in the Mars 2020 mission can now be reassessed. Are they credible or incredible? On this episode of Mars Guy, Perseverance and all Mars missions have gone radio silent as Mars slips behind the sun relative to our view from Earth. So during this two-week period of solar conjunction, I figure it would be a good opportunity to look back at what's been learned from the first phase of the mission now that scientific results have been published. Science advances through a method of questioning and testing hypotheses, which are documented in publications like these. As a scientist, this is what I do. Perseverance was sent to Jezero Crater because of what appears to be an ancient river delta, an enticing target in the search for life on Mars, but it landed next to it on terrain originally hypothesized to have formed from lava flows. This was based on the presence of the volcanic mineral pyroxene identified in spectra measured from orbit and the lobe-shaped margins resembling lava flows on Earth but other explanations could not be ruled out based only on orbital observations, including sediments deposited on the floor of an ancient lake that once filled the crater. Lake-deposited sediments would be a big deal in the search for life. The discovery by perseverance of what looked like layered sedimentary rocks kept the hope alive. Here's Mars Guy for scale. But the rock textures exposed with the abrading bit on the drill just weren't right. Lake deposits would be fine-grained, or at least show grains rounded by the tumbling action in a flowing river. The angular and interlocking grains that were instead observed are more consistent with igneous rocks, like formed from lava. And the layers could have formed from ash deposits during intermittent explosive volcanic activity. So the consensus of the mission science team is that much of the crater floor is covered by lava flows. But there are key observations that haven't been addressed, starting with one of the features of these rocks that's so distinctive that it was used to map their distribution from orbit, the fractures. Before Perseverance landed, this terrain was given the very generic but descriptive name Crater Floor Fractured Rough because of those fractures. On Earth, lava flows become fractured after they cool and solidify, although typically not with the fairly rectangular pattern we see in Jezero Crater. But on Mars, lava flows typically don't show any fractures, like these in Gusev Crater traversed by the Spirit rover, probably because they've been reduced to rubble by meteorite impacts over billions of years. In fact, it's been shown that lava flows on Mars get so beaten up by this process that they don't retain any outcrops. A great demonstration of this comes from Spirit on the ground. Its traverse across basaltic lava flows for a couple of kilometers didn't reveal a single outcrop. Only rubble remains of the former lava flows. This is in sharp contrast to the so-called pavers or paving stones that Perseverance frequently drove over and the ridges of outcrop it explored. Instead, they resemble places on Earth covered in a volcanic rock known as ignimbrite or tuff, which forms from cataclysmic explosive volcanic eruptions where nearly molten ash and pumice flow out and blanket the landscape. After these sedimentary deposits cool, the rocks can contract and form fractures known as cooling joints, which look a lot like the fractures on the floor of Jezero Crater. It's been shown that sedimentary or clastic rocks on Mars can maintain bedrock exposures thanks to wind erosion, but lava flows just accumulate rubble. So maybe clastic ignimbrites follow this pattern. But at this stage, both are credible hypotheses for the crater floor terrain in Jezero. 
Samples of this material have been collected for return to Earth for analysis in labs. This may be the only way to determine whether either hypothesis is incredible.